Hey everybody, this is Carissa and welcome back to my channel Inky Fairy Designs. Thank you so much for being here. Today we're going to watercolor this adorable image from Picket Fence Studios, one of my new favorite stamp companies. I picked this up at the Scrapbook Expo in Denver recently and just loved this stamp. I love coloring um, like people <laughs> and this style was just too cute and a blast to watercolor so you can see i have a little helper with me on my lap um she is going to be two next month and we uh, were just reunited after spending some time at grandma's and on this particular day she did not want to be anywhere else but my lap so here she is I am going to stamp my image with this blackout ink by Ink on 3. I love this ink for watercoloring. It's given me super crisp black lines. And here we go. Um, she tried to help me and actually smudge the image. So this is the first of, well, the only little faux pas that she created. So that became hers. And now I'm going to take a clean sheet of paper and try it again, make sure my hands aren't inky and um, just press that down. So I love using my Misty, especially when I'm watercoloring, even though I am watercoloring on a smooth, uh, hot press watercolor paper, 140 pounds. This is the Fabriano brand. Um, I still like to do it twice just to get a nice crisp image. She really loves those magnets, guys. <laughs> So I'm going to be watercoloring this image and I'm going to use uh, some of my smaller uh, paint brushes. So I'm using a round number two. Uh, you can see that's a Princeton snap brush. These are fantastic for watercoloring smaller images, line art images like this one where it has kind of like a lot of details in it. Uh, it keeps the point really well, holds just the right amount of water and, and uh, paint and I'm able to get into a lot of those detail areas easily. So I really like it. It's very economical, um, easy on the pocketbook. So I slowed it down here just so that you guys can see. I know a lot of times when I post my watercolor videos, they are sped up, which a lot of portion of this one is too, but I did slow it down in two key areas so you could see what I'm doing. So for the initial coloring, I am doing the uh, wet on dry technique. So that means that my paper is dry and I'm bringing in the wet paint. I lay it down uh, where I want the shadows to be first and then I will rinse my brush off and start to pull that color into the other areas of that part of the image. Uh, doing that creates immediate depth and I get my shadows, I get my highlights very, very simply. I will continue to rinse off my brush, then move on to another area of her gloves and do that same thing. I will leave a lot of white space on this image, which uh, means I just don't put any paint there at all. And that creates a really nice highlight as well as with this particular image, I just felt like I wanted it to be very painterly and not um, super fussed over. So I kept it very simple. And so I'm going to continue to do that. Um, I will bring in a little bit more pigment, pigment once I am pretty satisfied as far as where I've pulled the color out. And um, then I want to deepen up those shadow areas again. So I will just, as the paint is still wet, as the paper is still wet, I haven't moved on from that area. I will add more of that same color into those shadow um, places and then uh, let it move and blend on its own while I move to another area of the stamp. So this is really, really simple. This is what I do for the entire image. Um, so if you want to go back and check that out in real time, you can do that. But for the rest of the image, until I get to the background, I'm going to keep it sped up. And I think I've sped it up four times what it actually is. Um, but that, you know, just so that you, you know, you're not watching paint dry or something like that. So I did the same thing on her scarf and uh, I just kind of did a initial wash of color and then I'm going to go in now and drop in a more concentrated uh, pigment into certain areas just to give it that kind of fluffy and textured look 
that it is. So you can see I touched her face. I just wanted to make sure that it was dry before I went in uh, to do her cheeks. And I just used that same color that I used on the scarf mixed with a little bit of the skin tone I used and created that really light kind of rosy texture on her cheeks. So now that this area is dry on the gloves, I'm going to come in and deepen up some of those shadows. Um, so this would be called glazing. Uh, that's when you uh, put down an initial color on your image or your painting and then you allow that area to dry and come back in with another second coat or layer of color and that just intensifies those shadows and I just add that until I'm happy. The cup is really simple. I brought in a um, I think the Caliente Gray from Daniel Smith. That's the only Daniel Smith color I use on this image. The rest of the paints are a handmade paint that I bought from a seller on Etsy. Uh, her Store is uh, Designs by Rachel Beth. <laughs> it took me a second to remember that. I will have a link of that in the description box, not necessarily in my supplies list, but it will be in the description box if you want to check out her store. I don't know exactly what colors I'm using. I kind of combined a bunch of the sets that I had bought previously and um, created this tiny little palette just with her colors in it. And but she has some great colors. She has some great um, specials and she actually does like a monthly subscription now, which is pretty cool. So if you're new to watercoloring or you want to get some really fun colors, I highly recommend her. I've never not liked any of the colors that she has curated. So I went in with the sweater with this really beautiful mustard color. I mean, this whole image is just screaming fall to me um, with the colors that I used. Um, here her face is dry again. So I felt it was very light and I wanted to come in and deepen up some of those shadows. Oh, here, here my helper's back again and she liked my image so she tried to steal it from me. <laughs> Just cracks me up when I go back and watch this t while I'm editing. So now she's back on my lap and you can see that I have given her something that she can color while she's sitting with me and um, I, per I, I, she had just gotten this recently from my realtor and it was awesome because it's one of those magic pen things so I could let her be happy-go-lucky doing something on her own with me while she's sitting on my lap and I wasn't worried that she was gonna like swipe my image and get like unwanted color anywhere on it so yeah I'm gonna have to pick up a couple of more of those because she's totally filled it up while her and her brother have so but yeah that was great for this particular day um, and then she switched to a paintbrush <laughs> and she was like pretending to pick up paint oh my god it's just so cute I mean if you guys follow me on Facebook you see her you know she's cute all right, so now I'm going in and um, just putting like a light wash on her hair. I wasn't sure what I wanted to do with the hair. I kind of wanted to have um, brown or reddish hair. Um, so I started with um, a color very similar to her sweater. It's just a shade lighter. And then I just did a very light wash all over. And once that was dry, um, I no longer have my helper on my lap so I can go more in detail and I picked up a little reddish brown from that palette and I just picked out a few strands and started adding in some low lights. So with that blonde wash in the background of her hair that creates some natural highlights then I can come in and just create some texture because it is very very detailed her hair um, with the watercoloring I just picked out a few it wasn't perfect but in the end it gave um, the the interesting texture that I wanted for her hair once I was done with all of this little low lights in her hair I did go over the entire hair portion of the image with that same yellow that I used for the wash and just kind of lightly lightly blended it my paintbrush wasn't super wet I didn't have a ton of pigment on my brush um, it was just a very tiny amount just enough that I could blend it together and that's what I'm doing here and it really just softened it up deepened up those yellow highlighted areas and blended everything so beautifully together 
So I think that really pretty much finishes up the actual image. I'm going to go ahead and get started on the background. For this, I was keeping it very simple, which I do when I'm coloring and making cards. I just wanted to create a little bit of a blue highlight or sky illusion around her. So I slowed this portion down. This is the second portion of this video that I slowed down real time for you to see exactly how I do my backgrounds. Now this is the technique that I almost 99.9% .9 use when I'm doing a background around an image and I lay down the water first around my image where I want that blue to show and then I will pick up that paint and start dropping it in um, and letting it kind of move and blend into the uh, wet areas. This is called wet on wet. I mean, very simple. You can remember that. You wet your paper first and then you bring the wet pigment and let it just do its thing. That's what I think. That's what I say. I just let it do its thing. Then I'll clean off my brush and um, soften up those outer edges just to give them a really beautiful soft fade. And then I will just play with it a little bit and start adding in more of the pigment to give deeper um, shadows right up against the image um, so that it kind of just fades out around it. This is my favorite favorite way to add backgrounds or just a little bit of a halo sky texture to images. So I just sped up the rest. I'm doing the exact same thing for the other half of the image. I bring the blue down just a little bit to the bottom of the image just to soften that. There's no line art down there so it kind of just fades away and it really adds to that little painterly effect that I'm going for. So I'll finish that up and then I will start on some detailing on the image. I go in with a white gel pen. This is the 08 size. Add a few little freckle highlights on her cheeks. Oh, and then I forgot to paint in her lips. And now I'm using a Jelly Roll glitter pen. This is the clear glitter one and I'm just um, kind of touching it uh, on her mittens. And then here on the scarf, uh, just dotting it around the texture of the scarf. I didn't want to go over the whole thing and just color it all in. I just wanted to give it a little bit more texture on the scarf with the sparkle pen. Um, after that, I think I'm all done with those details. I'm going to take a die cut, simple rectangle stitched die. I have honestly no idea where it comes from. It's probably my favorite things, but it's been floating around my craft room on its own for more than I can remember, and now I don't know which set it's from. Just going to adhere that to a simple craft uh, A2 card base that I have folded from the top. And I totally forgot I wanted to add a sentiment, so I pulled out this Stay Cool set from My Favorite Things. Uh, the Picket Fence stamp that I used doesn't come with any sentiments, but they do have a lot of great sentiments. I just didn't pick any up when I was at the Scrapbook Expo. So since I had already adhered her down, I'm going to pull out my Tim Holtz stamp positioner. Um, that's great because it doesn't have a edge and I can just open up the card base and lay it down flat and go ahead and stamp that sentiment. I'm using the same blackout ink that I used to ink up the image. The only thing that I would do different on this card is if I would have thought about it, I would have left the stamp in the misty that I originally uh, stamped it in and before die cutting it I would have re-stamped it just because the paints that I use today are a little bit on the opaque side so uh, some of that uh, line art gets dulled out but in the end it really just kind of added to the painterly effect that I wanted anyway and I really like how it turned out. So thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel and like to see hand-painted cards or stamped images like this, please consider subscribing to my channel. And I'd love it if you shared this video with your other crafty friends. As always, I will have a complete list of supplies that I used in this video below. Until next time, guys, stay inspired, be creative, and share that with others. Bye.